here, I just want to give an announcement that your catechism will resume uh, when school starts in September. Okay. So during the summer, because there are a lot of families that are not around, uh, the, the catechism will be on a short break as well. Okay. So you come back September, don't worry. Uh, uh, we have some wonderful activities in store for you again uh, when school starts. Okay, uh, sometimes our young children are also, uh, they need also to get used to staying in the homily. Uh, we prepare Sunday school for them so they can understand the, the word. But also it's good for them to sit and uh, I just would like to encourage uh, those who are around the children to just uh, remember what Jesus said, let the children come to me. Okay. So try not to be diverted or distracted by any little noise or that they'll be doing, but try to focus on what God has in store for you today. Uh, in our reading today, it starts in our Gospel reading, we see that our Lord Jesus was explaining that His approach to ministry was different to John the Baptist. John the Baptist did not drink alcohol at all. He, 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 uh, he was very strict in his diet, locusts and wild honey and the way that he dressed. And, and our Lord Jesus used to spend time with sinners, with tax collectors and the prostitutes. And he was saying to them that at the end of the day, it really makes no difference to the heart that is desiring to draw near to God. Yeah. Some people, they say, oh, well, uh, Bishop Elmer was like this. Yeah. Father Don is like this. You know. uh, Father Irwin is like this. Father Glenn is like this. You know, it's like you have uh, in a, in, among the cops, among the police, the good cop and the bad cop, but everyone is needed. But to the heart that is unwilling to draw near, like Jesus said, when John the Baptist came, not all of you went to him. When I came, not all of you went to me, to me. It really makes no difference. If a heart is willing to draw near to God, regardless of who it is who is preaching, they will hear God. Okay. So our gospel today, I won't, that, uh, I won't go through all the, because of lack of time, through all the verses. I want to go straight to uh, the main point of what Jesus said today. He said in verse 28, Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. If you have come to church today and you're carrying something very heavy, a load that is on your shoulders, and if you feel like the whole world is on your shoulders, you have come to the right place. Our Lord Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This is supposed to be a day of rest, but not a day where you rest by watching the movies or go to the park, but you rest upon God. That's the greatest rest that you will ever have. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now sometimes we hear that and it doesn't quite register. I don't know where you yoke, okay? What is a yoke? Is it what is in the middle of the egg? Not quite. A yoke is a wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals, attached to the plow or a cart that they are to pull. Okay? So, okay, may araro and uh, like the field is being tilled, and there are two carabaos or two oxen. Notice a yoke is something that connects the two oxen or the two carabaos together. Some of the other synonyms of yoke is a harness, collar, a coupling, a tackle, a 
cat in French, I think, equipage. Uh, it's like something that binds the two together. In the Greek word zygos, it is a wooden bar placed over the neck of a pair of animals. So you will notice in the Bible sometimes they will say a yoke of oxen. It means two oxen. Okay? Not just one carabao, but two when you say a yoke. Okay? So, so that they can pull the load together. Um, symbolically, Therefore, when you speak about a yoke, it represents partnership. It represents commitment. And some, it is, it represents to some to be enslaved by. The thing is, in life, there is a tug of war on who our partner will be in life. And St. Paul in Romans elaborates on this. If you have Bibles with you, you can open with me to Romans, the letter of Paul to Romans chapter 6 in verse 16. It is either you are a slave or a bond slave of the Lord or a bond slave of sin. You see, sin so easily entangles us. And those who are addicted, for example, to whatever addiction it is, whether it's drugs, alcohol, uh, gambling, uh, women, or men, yeah, whatever you're addicted to, it comes in contrary, or it's like a tug of war, the other one is pulling you on one side, and our Lord Jesus is pulling you on the other side. St. Paul says in verse 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or whether obedience leading to righteousness? Now this was our reading last week. I'm going to go to Romans 7 later, but since I wasn't here last Sunday, I want to go through the reading that we had last Sunday in Romans 6. It says, but God, we thank that though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the wicked weakness of your flesh. Don't you notice like those who are having difficulty, for example, getting rid of, of cigarettes or smoking or getting rid of drugs or women or whatever, they find it so difficult. Okay? It's like they are slaves to gambling or slaves to whatever it is that is pulling them. Okay? So he says here, just as you presented your members slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, now present yourselves as slaves for righteousness or holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have in the things that you are now ashamed? But now having been set free from sin, having become slaves of God, you have your fruit of holiness. And then last week's reading ended with this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, if you are if you are a slave of our Lord, you will end up with eternal life. If you are a slave of the sin which is pulling you down, the end is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So that if you if the yoke is a symbol of being a slave to or, or submitting your will to your partner, okay? then it's either you, are, you have submitted your will to a life of sin, or you, are, you have submitted your will to our Lord. Okay? So there is that, uh, that decision that we all have to make. So now in Romans 7, our reading today, St. Paul continues, it's the same, it's the same letter. He says, you know, I don't understand myself. He said, 
I do the things that I don't want to do. I find, he said, uh, I delight to do the will of God, the law of God, according to the inward man, but I see another law in my body, warring against the law of my mind. So there's like, there's this tug of war. And then he said, how wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? See, sometimes you, your body says, you, you, your spirit says, I want to pray. I need God today. I'm going to church today. I need the Eucharist. And then your body is pulling you. Sleep first. Sleep some more. You're tired. You know, you, 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 you did all these things. Just rest. A while. And your body is pulling you down to your bed. And your spirit is wanting it. And there's this tug of war. And then he said, who will save me? St. Paul said. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. You need to make a choice and a certain decision. Who you will be yoked with. Who your partner will be for the rest of your life. In Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So what does being yoked with Christ entail? Well, in our collect today, in our prayer today, we pray, Lord, may we be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. So two things. Devotion to Jesus with our whole heart. It is like being married it's like, it's like the church being married to Christ. Okay? And that is where we find, uh, you know, the first reading today from the book of Song of Solomon. It is like that love story between Christ and his bride. So we have to be devoted to Jesus with our whole heart and united to his body, the church, with pure affection. Marriage has been likened to Christ and His Church, or the relationship between Christ and His Church has been likened to marriage. It says, uh, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Also, as Christ is the head of the Church, He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the Church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Okay? So that is why when you read the book, Song of Solomon, okay, it is not a, an erotic book, okay? but you have to see it within, within the context of the relationship between our Lord Jesus and the church. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle for a young stag. stag. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He is looking through the windows. My beloved spoke and said, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come, come away. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. It's like the Lord Jesus is saying, Rise up, tell her, come, let's get married. Come away with me. Magpasal na tayo. Let go of your sin and enter into covenant with me. Our song reading today from Psalm 45 also speaks of that relationship between our Lord Jesus the groom and the church as the bride. And many, many more scriptures refer to that relationship. So partnership with God is likened unto a marriage covenant. And being and making God your partner, when Jesus says, come to me, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To be yoked, with Christ means you are making a decision to make God the partner of your life. Okay. If I may do a 
survey, how many of you here have made a decision to make God the partner of your life? Can you raise your hand? Okay, put your hands down. You cannot have one partner and then a mistress on the side. Like, uh, okay, I'm going to have God as my partner, but quoting the version now, I'm going to have a little sin on the side. Right. Let go of the sin which so easily entangles and make God a partner, be yoked to Him. Okay. He has to be the partner of your life. In Scripture, the word to know, okay, like for example in, in the Old Testament, and Adam knew Eve, and Eve gave birth to Cain. Okay. So that word to know in the Old Testament refers to more than just uh, understanding with the mind. But the word know involves also that intimate relationship between husband and wife. And he knew her, and she conceived. So, when someone comes to you and says, I want to know you in the biblical way, you say, uh, wait first. Uh, okay? To know a person means to have that intimate relationship with God. And that's why in the road to Emmaus, when Jesus broke bread with his disciples, it says, and they knew him. And they knew him. The Eucharist, I guess can be likened to that relationship, the biblical relationship between man and a woman. And every time you come to the Eucharist, you are renewing, renewing your covenant with God. Now I want you to see it in a sacred sense, not in malice. Uh, we are not to treat it in disrespect or in contempt, but with respect. Why does Jesus say, take my yoke? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How, when, it becomes, when does it become difficult? It becomes difficult when one carabao insists on going his own way. And we sing that song, I did it my way. And God is saying, no, this is the way. And then, Lord, dito. Ito ang gusto ko, i-bless mo ako. And God says, no, this is the way. Okay? So when one carabao pulls here and the other carabao pulls there, then, then you have zigzag. Okay? A life that sometimes is, becomes difficult. But when what is needed is a surrender of the will of the carabao and say, okay, you are now my partner in life. We will go forward together. Okay. Why does the burden become light? Bakit gumagaan yung bigat ng buhay kapag partner natin ng Diyos? Why does the, our problems and our burdens become light when God becomes the partner in our life? Well, because when you are pulling a load or whatever it is, some coconuts or I don't know, some rocks or whatever, you are pulling that load in that caritor, that caritela. When two are pulling together, then it's, it's, it becomes easier and lighter rather than just one pulling the whole load. But the wonderful thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when you make God the partner of your life, the impossible becomes possible. Okay? It's like even if you are against 10,000, if, if God is on your side and you're on the side of God, you will win. It doesn't matter how heavy the load is. 
the impossible becomes possible. Okay? So if someone says, Father, pasan ko ang buong mundo, I'm carrying the whole world on my shoulders. Well, maybe it's because you're pulling the load by yourself and you need a partner. But you need to surrender your will because the yoke will not work unless you have surrendered your will to God. And you say, okay, God, I won't do it my way. I will do it your way. I did it your way. Okay. I'm going to do it your way from now on. But sometimes, you know, uh, uh, we get to have this tug of war with the other caravan. I'm reminded of the story of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 28. The angel appeared to her and said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Okay. Remember that phrase, with you. Okay. Avec, okay. with you. Okay. And blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, considering what reading this is. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Can you say that with me? With God. With God. Okay. And behold, he says, You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And verse 34, Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I do not know a man. In the King James Version, the word to know again. How can it be? I, I'm a virgin. I, I have not known a man. I do not know a man. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is who is born will be called the Son of God. For indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. Now, Elizabeth was barren, and yet she conceived. And this is now the sixth month for her was called barren. And then in verse 37, a very important verse, for with God, and yeah, have that with God, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Okay? With God, nothing. In other words, without God, there are many things that are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And that is why the burden is light. Okay? Because you're pulling the load, you're pulling your life, all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties, you're pulling it not by your own strength and with your, by yourself, this time with God. Can you say that again? With God. With God. That's a very important thing. And Enoch walked with God. Okay? And he found favor with God. I know of uh, uh, the, uh, the new primate of Asia, the new Archbishop of Asia is Archbishop Ricardo. I, I managed to visit him many, many years ago because he was this, uh, 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 he was a young uh, graduate, he, he, he studied in Ateneo, and then, you know, so Manila boy and everything, and then suddenly he was sent to this province uh, in uh, Kalibu, right? Right? In, and, and he was having a church there, and, and yet, you know what, he was able to, the congregation grew and grew and grew and grew, up to the point where he had his own television show. And you can imagine, how, how did that all happen? One day, I had the opportunity to visit him before being sent over to London as a missionary. I was sent there, and I went to his church, and the altar was there, when I looked around, I looked at the back. You know, he, he had something that was uh, a poster at the back, right? It's like, right now you see our, our, our back is blank. The wall is blank. But in his church, there was this big banner. 
And this is what he said in his, in his Bible. Okay? All things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. You know, sometimes we need a banner or a poster to remind us, especially when all the problems are coming in, okay, that all things are possible with God. The Lord Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and he said, I sure they say to you, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When his disciples heard it, they were astonished. And they said, who then can be saved? I guess all the apostles were kind of rich. You know, they had, had John and James, Peter and Andrew, they had servants and they had several boats. They were not just, you know, a fisherman with one banka. They had several boats there. So they said, oh. Who then can be saved? And Jesus said, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So with God, nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. Here, it was more positive. What the angel said to Mary, in a more, it was uh, the phrase was in a negative way. Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus said to his disciples here, "All things are possible with God." Which is the same thing, actually. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. So the only thing you have to make sure of is that God is with you and that you are on God's side. That you are yoked to him. That is why David, after committing adultery and murder, you see, God helped him against Goliath. So he knew that God was with him. But when he had committed adultery and murder, he said, Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Please, please. Mawala na lahat. Huwag lang si God sa buhay. Okay. I can lose everything else, but not God. Because with God, all things are possible. St. Peter used that term, well, Mary, in after giving birth to Jesus, or before giving birth to Jesus, made a song, which is called the Magnificat. And in the Magnificat, Mary said, Behold, I am the bondservant or the handmaid of the Lord. The handmaid or bondservant. Let it be done to me according to your word. So she saw herself as a bondservant. And not just a servant, a bondservant. Yoked with Christ. St. Peter, in 1 Peter 2 verse 16, says, Act as free men. But do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as a bond slave of, of God. You know, because of slavery, uh, which has been abolished, and of course nowadays we still see slavery in different forms, sometimes we are allergic when it comes to using that word bond slave. So some people say bond servant instead of bond slave. But you see, when, when the scripture uses that word bond slave, it is used with the highest dignity. It refers to Christians who willingly live under Christ's authority. Those who have surrendered their will as devoted followers. That's why St. Paul, he, he, when, whenever he writes, he say in Ephesians 6 verse 6, uh, not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves of Christ. In Romans 1 verse 1, it says, Paul, a bond slave, a bond servant of Christ, called as an apostle. I guess if you're allergic with that word bond slave or bond servant, think of it in this way. What to be yoked means, I belong to him, and so he is with me at all times. 
or for example with a partner when you say to be yoked with Christ rather than alipin ako ng Panginoon because okay? people don't like that word alipin it's more like kakopol ko si Lord kakopol ko si Lord you have the term ito ko kakopol ko ito kakopol ko kakopol ko this this is my partner in life. My partner in life is God. We make many choices in life and we find that a lot of our partners have failed us. Our loved ones in the Philippines sometimes, you know, when they were courting you, they uh, were saying, Pipitasin ko ang mga between. I'm going to get the, the stars in the sky and give it to you. I will go and climb the highest mountain and sisisiling ko yung pinakmalalang I'm going to, to swim to the deepest of all oceans just for you. And then when, you, when, you, when you're no longer like this and you are like this, <laughs> they find an 18 year old and they say, bye bye. I'm not in love with you anymore. And so because our partners have failed us, we don't want to have any partner in life anymore. But listen to this. This was a psalm reading in the morning prayer today, Psalm 146. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of the earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they will return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob. In other words, if you willingly yoke yourself to Jesus, surrender your will, and even see yourself as his bond servant, then you belong to him, yes, but he will be with you at all times and forevermore. Okay. So that is why the ancient Christian greeting is the Lord be with you. Okay. The Lord be with you. Okay. So sometimes when, when someone is facing a, an operation uh, and, and they need a uh, you know, to take away a cancer or they're, they're facing chemotherapy or dialysis or whatever, sometimes the best thing to just say to them is, the Lord be with you. Because with God, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible. So brothers and sisters, today, as we look at the yoke, that is my greeting to you. The Lord with you. Be 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 with you. Be